America. The SPP, which many consider to be simply a blueprint for the North American Union, would weaken U.S. laws and regulations and diminish American sovereignty. In 2005, an arrangement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States was made. This arrangement, unannounced to the public, unregulated by Congress, merges the United States, Mexico, and Canada into one entity, erasing all borders. It's called the North American Union. You might want to ask yourself why you've never heard of this. Power. This is people paying attention. This is listening to alternative media. This is understanding that when 600 of the richest people in the world get together and say they're going to do something, they ain't just whistling Dixie. And we talked about this on the show the last time I was on, that, they, that there's talk at the highest level to simply let the Federal Reserve note just go. Let it slide. Let our currency just completely go into the abyss. They introduced the Amero. The Amero will be backed by silver. And now we have, just like the euro that they introduced about 12 years or so ago in Europe, now we'll have a viable currency that can be used for the United States, Mexico, and Canada. And this is all a drive towards the merger of, of the U.S., Mexico, and Canada into the NAU, the North American Union. For over 50 years, the Bilderberg Group constructed the European Union by stealth under the guise of trade deals. Now the elite are using the same secretive program to complete the North American Union. But this time, superstate integration is on the extreme fast track. International agreements like NAFTA, GATT, and APEC were just stepping stones in the formation of the NAU. The North American Union was officially born at Baylor University in Waco, Texas on March 23, 2005. The leaders of the United States, Mexico, and Canada told the press that they were only meeting to discuss trade. It soon leaked that a secret meeting had been held during the Security and Prosperity Trilateral Summit. The three governments had refused to release the secret agreement to the people. In September of 2006, their treasonous operation was blown wide open. They may well be doing something decent and good. Who knows? Maybe there are some benefits of these things they're suggesting. But to me, it's sort of a collusion between secret government and big business, and I don't like what I see coming. Can you say today that this is not a prelude to a North American Union, similar to a European Union? Uh, are there plans to build some kind of superhighway connecting all three countries? And do you believe all of these theories about a possible erosion of national identity stem from a lack of transparency from this partnership? Thank you for... Well, let me begin. I, uh, and I guess I've read some things from my opposition in Canada. I'm not sure these are generally expressed concerns, but a couple of my opposition leaders have speculated on massive water diversions and uh, uh, superhighways to the continent, maybe interplanetary, I'm not sure as well. Um... Manitoba is also taking a major role in the development of a mid-continent trade corridor, connecting our northern port of Churchill with trade markets throughout the central U.S. and Mexico. That's... The concept, an alliance has been built with business leaders and state and city governments spanning the entire length of the corridor. When fully developed, the trade route will incorporate an inland port in Winnipeg with pre-clearance for international shipping. And I, I'm amused by some of the some of the speculation, uh, some of the old uh, you call them political scare tactics. If you've been in politics as long as I have, you get used to that kind of technique where you lay out a conspiracy and then force people to try to prove it doesn't exist. And that's just the way some people operate. I'm amused by the difference between what actually takes place in the meetings and what some are trying to you know, say takes place. It's, a, it's quite comical, actually. This security and prosperity agreement, as it is being called, has no democratic underpinning to it. It's being negotiated by the very same elites that negotiated NAFTA. And let's look at some of the signs of what is happening. It is suddenly clearer why a company from Spain called Sintra wants to be the gatekeeper on this new highway structure.
The North American Super Corridor Coalition is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to developing this international integrated multimodal transportation system along the International Mid-Continent Trade and Transportation Corridor. Uh, where does that sentence say anything about the United States? And imagine if this corridor is then leased, leased to foreign interests, who then charge tolls. This can displace every other major transportation system that we have if this is locked in piece by piece are calling upon the government of Canada to stop the implementation, implementation of the Security and Prosperity Partnership of North America with uh, the United States and Mexico because they believe it's, uh, um, there is no democratic mandate from the people of Canada, uh, there has been no parliamentary oversight, and uh, they consider that there will pro be profound consequences on Canada's existence as a sovereign nation and its ability to adopt autonomous and sustainable economic, social, and environmental policies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I feel compelled to say what I'm about to say. Now, I risk sounding like a conspiracy theorist, but it's no longer a theory. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one-world communist government. The combining of national governments started with the European Union, that union started with trade agreements, then a common currency, the euro, and now a European parliament that is feverishly passing laws that uh, override the laws of, num of the member nations. A constitution was drafted but rejected by a few uh, of those nations, but never mind. They implemented it anyway. Now it's North America's turn. Building on the North American Free Trade Agreement, the NAFTA section of the Commerce Department is busy drafting laws and regulations for a North American Union. The question is that the states are going to have to create massive databases, use massive databases, and are these databases going to be secure? The track record on the security of these databases is not good. They are hacked into on a regular basis. On this question of sovereignty, it's very difficult for a large country to accept that somebody is going to come in, like the United States or like the Europeans, and is basically going to come in and say, you're not doing your regulation in a proper way. Fair game. But what's going to happen when China and India are economies as powerful as the United States or Europe? And what's going to happen when there's a mortgage meltdown in India? What's going to happen when a Chinese hedge fund goes under and that the results of that tsunami don't stop at the Chinese or the Indian border, but that in fact you find them in Idaho and Iowa and California? Who's going to deal with that unless we're prepared to understand that in fact we're all going to have to give up a little bit of our sovereignty in order to make the world work? We don't want an integration of North America, period. We want Canada, period. We want our independence, period. We want our sovereignty, period. We want our nationhood, period. Nations matter. Canadians are different from people from the United States, and we're different from people from Mexico, and viva la différence. Yeah. Words and actions has activists on another front worried. Last February, Obama pledged that he would resume the Security and Prosperity Partnership talks between Mexico and Canada that President Bush initiated. He also said the talks will be transparent. Those opposed to the North American Union say that now, whether he will or will not deliver on that promise, becomes something they doubt. President-elect Obama giving new life to the North American Union, a plan by business and political elites to tear down the trade barriers among the United States, Canada, and Mexico, and to create a NAFTA superhighway. These agreements, these arrangements are not about trade. They're about the destruction of sovereign nations. There's an intention, a deliberate intention, to destroy nations and to destroy sovereignty. And it's about time that we've got political leaders that are prepared to take the bull by the horns and call it for what it is and say it's got to stop. 